Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on another Hawaii Ocean Adventure. I'm Joey and this here is Trevor. Today we're going diving through flooded lava tubes, our favorite way to explore. Today we'll be free diving along the coastline of Puako, located on the northwest side of Hawaii Island. During our lava tube dives, we'll see a good deal of tropical fish, an intelligent octopus weaving its way through coral and sea urchins, and even have close encounters with white tip reef sharks that also enjoy inhabiting lava tubes. Before we get started, don't forget to click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps my channel and it's a super small free way you can show your support. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Hawaii adventures. Thanks for liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. Let's dive in. Above the surface at Puoko, three of Hawaii Island's five mountains can be seen. To the south, we have a pretty clear view of Hualalai standing at a little over 8,000 feet. In the center of the island covered in clouds is Mauna Kea at almost 14,000 feet, and to the north we can see Kohala, which is only about 5,000 feet tall. On our swim to deeper waters, we pass through a school of Hawaiian surgeon fish dancing with each other and feeding on the coral below growing on the lava. We also come across several pincushion sea stars, appropriately named after their uncanny resemblance to a pincushion. As we get further out, I notice a long slender tube shape under a coral head that contrasts with the sandy ocean floor. After further inspection, I realize it's a medium-sized moray eel that is sticking its head out on the other side of the coral to keep an eye on me. It's amazing how eels can fit themselves into very small places for protection. We continue swimming through a school of surgeon fish, which are completely different than surgeon fish, although their names are commonly confused with each other. We find our first sea arch about 100 meters from shore at the lava flow drop-off. I dive down and take a look around upside down for sharks or anything potentially hazardous back in the cave. Trevor also dives down to take a peek and we notice that the sea arch is actually a double arch with a wider and deeper second pass through. We're only doing short breath holds while we check out the structure since we won't be diving through anything right now. Once we've done our research, we practice some breath exercises on the surface, then take the plunge. We both pass through the small arch and then head through the second opening. We've scoped this area out several times for sharks as well as to make sure we'll be able to fit through each opening. This lava tube has a super wide entrance that four divers could fit through simultaneously. The ceiling is a bit low, so we've got to watch out for urchins growing above us and below us. We swim slowly through this first lava tube to help keep our heart rates down. We're still looking out for reef sharks even though they're mostly active at night and don't pose a great danger to us. Say hi to Trevor as I pass under the sea arch upside down and we both head up to the surface for air. We pass through this lava tube and arch a few times to practice our breath holds, sometimes grabbing onto the sides of the cave to conserve our energy. Here's Trevor diving into the depths while I give you guys an alternate perspective by doing a loop-de-loop -loop around this arch. This is the first lava tube we've found today and it's one of the bigger lava tubes we've discovered, so we take a few more pass-throughs at about 20 feet from the surface for a distance of about 40 feet. I realize that I don't have much footage of myself since the camera is attached to my diving mask most of the time from my point of view, so here's a quick dive with me in the frame. I've learned three very important skills when it comes to free diving. One, take the snorkel out of my mouth while diving for safety. Two, equalize the pressure in my ears by holding my nose trying to blow air out. And three, alleviate the pressure in my eyes by actually blowing a little air out of my nose into my mask to equalize the pressure inside and outside of my mask. If you decide to try free diving, which I hope all of you watching this video do at some point, these tips are absolutely essential for successful free diving. Here's a peek into the next cave we find. As I peer my head in looking for sharks, I notice a cute trumpet fish in the midst of the deep blue and realize that this cave is actually a lava tube that connects to the other side. I follow the side of the lava drop off to another nearby cave in hopes that this one connects to the first one or also connects to the other side. And whoa, there's another light blue patch on the left side, two entrances to this one. We couldn't see all the way back into the cave so we decided to skip this one and move on. Sometimes we'd be swimming over a vast expanse of ocean and then all of a sudden a massive coral structure would appear right in front of us. This looks like it could be potentially great. We found a large sea cave opening so we dived down to scope it out. Experienced divers like Trevor have learned to equalize without holding their nose which is extremely useful for equalizing while using both arms for swimming. Once we make it to the cave opening, we see lots of blue space, which is exactly what we're looking for. We start on the end with a small entry so we have larger exit points if needed. There are a few fish swimming in the open and near the cave walls as they search for an afternoon meal. I could keep going out this massive exit, but the cave is too fascinating to not take a look around. I decide to exit through this smaller opening and I'm sure to be careful for the urchins that line the perimeter. After I'm looking through, I peer back for just a second to get a view of where I just came from. Pretty cool looking. It's sick in there. Here's Trevor going for a dive through one of the top facing entrances. Once we're in the cave, there are so many options of where to go, but only a short amount of time that we can hold our breath.
We start checking out other potential exits to the cave, but they seem a little tight for us to fit through, so we decide to play it safe and save those dive throughs for another time. There are so many diving possibilities in this lava tube. Here's an overhead view of Trevor swimming through. This tube has an amazing skylight that allows me to track Trevor's movements from the surface. Keeping an eye on fellow divers and also having a full breath of air is important if anything were to go wrong. This is the only part where I lose sight of him, but I know where the entrances are so I can head towards the exit he's swimming towards. Here's the most epic view of the structure that I got on film that shows how deep this tube goes and how many entry points it has. As we're searching for the next lava tube, Trevor spots the master of camouflage, the day octopus which is found throughout the Indo-Pacific region. As its name implies, this octopus hunts and travels during the day. You can see here that it's hiding from us between two coral masses in a very small crevice. You can see this octopus's siphon hard at work expelling water from its gill chamber with its two eyes peeking at us from a squint. The day octopus only grows to be about 10 pounds with its short lifespan of about 12 to 15 months. Check out this amazing camouflage as I dive down from directly above it. Did you miss it? Let me rewind that so you can see just how quickly and easily this master of disguise can change its shape and color. Right now, we can only see the very tip of its head as it's trying to decide if it's safe to come out or not. Unthreatened, the octopus is a rusty orange-brown color. When it needs to camouflage, it can quickly mimic the surrounding coral texture and colors to hide from predators. This guy starts making moves over prickly sea urchins unfazed when I get a little too close for comfort. The octopus is one of the most intelligent invertebrates on the planet. According to a new study from Harvard researchers, octopus arms operate independently from their centralized brain and their many suction cups can individually feel and taste what they're touching. This is quite a remarkable animal and it's always a pleasure to experience an interaction with these marvelous creatures. We thought we were far enough away to watch it migrate from its hiding spot, but the closer we got, the more frightened it became and retreated back to the safety of its nook. Thank you for your time, Mr. or Miss Octopus. We appreciate you. The Lava Rock shoreline is pretty shallow for about 100 feet out. We take a break after a few hours of diving and then head back out. Look at all these fish in the next lava tube we find. Trevor dives down for a shark check before entering. Here's what he sees from a POV perspective. Once he sees that there's an exit and no sharks, he dives in. There's an abundance of tropical fish in this tube and the sunlight streaming through the formation make this a magical lava tube to dive through. This dive made me feel like I was swimming through an aquarium with all the sea life flittering about around me. There's definitely two exits to this tube, so I follow Trevor through the long stretch and admire the underwater beauty that surrounds us. The water is much warmer down here than on the surface. Here's a skittish pink tail triggerfish that takes refuge in a small coral pocket. This next lava tube arch is so big you could drive a car through it. This porcupine fish is enjoying the warm rays of the sun below this arch along with the yellow tang that are swimming nearby. Can you see the crown of thorns starfish between these two lava tubes? These invasive starfish have very painful stings and can devastate marine communities by taking over hard coral reefs. I wanted to test my skills through this tight and narrow lava tube. It's the smallest one I've fit through yet. Mm -hmm. 
On this particular dive, I'm trying to keep an eye on Trevor as he enters this lava tube. I know the exits and I follow him around to the other side. I don't see him coming out so I check the other nearby exit that he probably went through right around the corner of this coral. I don't see him there either. Maybe he actually did go out the other exit so I look back and still don't see him. I'm getting nervous and I need to go back to the surface for air. Oh, there he is. He was just spending a little extra time looking around and working on his breath hold. Here's one of the last lava tubes we dive through before encountering the shark. Here's Trevor chilling out again in the lava tube, working on his breath hold. After a great day of diving, we start heading back in. Okay, one more last quick lava tube dive for good measure. There are so many to explore and we wish we had more time and breath capacity to explore more. This lava tube had several super crazy entrances like this near perfect circle entryway that I used to dive behind Trevor. The underwater world is absolutely majestic. Before I get too carried away by the beauty, I've got to look up to make sure I'm not trying to reach the surface with an overhang above me. I swim out and around to the surface, then take another dive through a different exit. It's a little murky down here, so Trevor and I both are on the lookout for reef sharks that could be hanging out in lava tubes or under overhangs. Watch Trevor dive through this last sea arch before we get back to shore. I dive down directly behind him and as I approach the seafloor, I check the cave that's in front of me and to my left. I see a six foot reef shark that we must have awakened from its slumber. Although I'm not in danger, I opt out of swimming through the lava tube and head to the surface to warn Trevor. Shark in there. You see it? Shark. Thanks so much for joining us on our diving adventure today. Don't forget to like this video for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my channel for more Hawaii adventures. See you all again soon.